Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at um, we're going to be looking at the Grub Legacy Bootloader. Now, if you wish to follow along, we're going to need a system that has Grub Legacy on it, such as CentOS 6.6, .6, which is what I'm using in this in this video. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at where Grub is stored. So we go to for cd forward slash boot forward slash Grub. If we do an ls you'll see all of the different files for Grub Legacy. And you'll see all these different different stages. Um, so basically, to understand how that works is that on, say, a master boot record system, there's only 512 bytes at the start of the disk that is used um, for starting up. So so in stage one it'll store part of that in the master boot record and then and then it will go to stage 1.5 if there's enough space in the master boot record but then stage two um, is where it's reading the hard drive and getting more information so stage one basically makes it be able to to see stage two where grub will actually load off the hard drive rather than be in the master boot record because it's too big to be in the master boot record so then stage two will give it um, the ability to read the rest of the disk basically um, but on um, grub one menu.list is where everything is stored so so grub one is the same as grub legacy um, so you can see in here that we have a default um, zero, timeout equals five. We've got a splash image. It's saying that the menu is hidden by default, so you have to press a key to see the menu. Then you can see that we have our kernel image. And in here, <clears throat> if we wanted to, we could edit the settings. Now, this setting here um, gives it the Red Hat graphical background and this option quiet basically makes it so output doesn't display on the screen as it's booting. So if you want to see what's happening while the computer is booting you could remove these two options here. And you can see that there's basically two kernels in here at the moment um, that you could actually boot from. So what I might do is in here change the timeout to say 30 seconds and I will remove this hidden menu option and if I write and quit out of here um, we have just edited the grub configuration so what I'm going to do now is just go shut down dash r space now and we will actually see the changes. So now, instead of there just being a countdown, we should see a menu come up. Um, and we should have a 30 second timeout. So down here, you can see that there's 27, 26. So down the very bottom, the bottom line, you can see it counting down from 30 seconds. You can see that the menu popped up. Um, now in the Grub Bootloader, what we can do is we can actually press the E key and you can see that we can actually um, see different lines so if we wanted to edit the kernel parameters we could go to the second line and press E again and in here you can see the red hat background graphical background and quiet so if I delete these two options it will only do it um, for this um, for this boot so if I press the enter key and then it takes us back where we can do more editing if we want and it says here that we can press B to boot so let's press the B key to boot and now you can see it doesn't have the background you can just actually see all the text flying past on the screen and on that editing screen if we wanted to we could actually enter single user mode as 
as well. But um, I'm just going to log into this system. And bring up the terminal, change it to the root user. Um, and I'm just going to make it five seconds again. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Now, if for some reason the grub bootloader was was damaged or you're petitioning it from scratch, grub dash install is the command that is used. And if we look at the options, it's basically asking grub dash install options and then the install device. So, so in our example here, we would do grub dash install dev SDA. And you can see that it's just rewritten, rewritten, so it says installation finished, no error reported, um, HD zero dev SDA. So, is rewritten grub to to the master boot record well the part of it that makes it load up anyway not all of grub is in the master boot record so that's that's grub legacy um you you may find it on on centos 6 systems in if you've got servers with centos 6 um but any newer systems is going to use grub 2. so this is grub 1 or what they call grub legacy um, and that's pretty much all you need to know about it. So I will, um, I will end the video there.